The Euclid Space Telescope has just released five brand new images, showcasing unprecedented new views of the universe. This is only the second batch of images ever released from the telescope, and it is a very exciting selection of objects in the images. They range from an explosive nebula, forming hundreds of thousands of stars, to an interacting group of galaxies, and even massive galaxy clusters that are massive enough to bend and warp incoming light from distant galaxies behind them. Here, we'll take a look at each of the images and see what we can see, as well as talking about what makes Euclid the best new kid on the space telescope block. Euclid, with its two-meter primary mirror, is mainly a survey telescope, meaning it will spend most of its time systematically imaging large portions of the sky. Over six years, it will image one-third of the night sky, recording the locations, shapes, and colors of two billion galaxies, while taking spectra of 30 million galaxies too. It will reveal things to us about dark matter and dark energy, and ultimately we will build the largest ever 3D map of the universe using Euclid data. This means that the telescope doesn't generally target and image specific objects and then release the images like telescopes such as JWST and Hubble do. For Euclid, if you're in the survey footprint, that's great and you get imaged. If not, tough luck. However, after the telescope launched, made the 1.5 million kilometer journey to its orbit around Lagrange point 2, and all of its instruments were turned on, commissioned, and their performance was verified to be excellent, we took some of the first observations that led to the images we're seeing today. These so-called early release observations, or EROs, were small programs of observations that were targeted at specific objects. This was done to study a particular question or show off the telescope's capabilities, and they each took place before the main survey of Euclid began. 17 astronomical targets were used in the EROs over just 24 hours. So just imagine what the telescope will achieve over its six-year mission if this is the quality of observations we can get in just one day. In this single day, Euclid created a catalogue of 11 million objects in visible light and 5 million infrared objects. We are truly at the beginning of an incredibly exciting adventure to map the universe and its structure in more detail than ever before. The main Euclid survey is now underway, and I'm not sure how often we'll get to see images like this released to the public, so let's enjoy these stunning images right now. Each of these brand new images is at least four times sharper than it's possible to get using ground-based telescopes here on Earth, and they cover large patches of sky using both infrared and visible light data, captured simultaneously by Euclid and its massive field of view. Now, let's properly dive into these amazing images. The first one here is of a massive cluster of galaxies called Abel 2390. The galaxy cluster itself is mostly shown by bright white galaxies near the center of the image. The bright white objects with the spikes, those are not galaxies, but rather are stars in our own Milky Way galaxy that are between us and Abel 2390. So they look incredibly bright because they're so close to us compared to the galaxies behind. The galaxies themselves are each made of billions of stars, so in reality they are much brighter than a single star. But they're also so, so much more distant that to us they look much fainter in these images. In my opinion, the best thing about galaxy clusters like this though is actually what's behind them. More distant galaxies have their light bent, warped and magnified in a process called gravitational lensing that we can see on display here. This effect often makes the background galaxy shapes look elongated and stretched into arcs or even rings, and sometimes lets us see multiple images of the same galaxy in the sky. I go into much more detail on gravitational lensing in this video here about a JWST image, so please check out that one if you'd like more details on the specifics of lensing and how it happens. In this image though, we can see around 50,000 galaxies, and many of them near the center are showing this beautiful lensing. In fact, gravitational lensing, both weak and strong, is one of the powerful tools that Euclid will use to study where dark matter tends to live, alongside studying the clustering of galaxies. We can zoom in a bit, and here we get a better view of light permeating the cluster from stars that are ripped apart from their parent galaxies. These stars are now roaming the space between the galaxies and creating what we call intracluster light. I can flip to a version of the image that just enhances this intracluster light artificially to make it a little easier to see. 
but spotting this faint glow is something that Euclid is especially good at. All these images so far have been a combination of infrared and visible light, but here we can also have a quick look at the cluster just in visible light. And to be honest, it really shows off the power of combining more wavelengths of light. That's because I think this image doesn't quite pop with the same vibrancy as the combined images do. We can notice though that the brightest stars do look a little bit different here. In the combined images, they have the usual six diffraction spikes that Euclid gives to stars, thanks to the three struts that hold up its secondary mirror. The very brightest stars though also seem to get an extra curved diffraction spike too. However, this changes a bit in the visible light image. We still see an extra spike or two, but it loses a lot of that curve. To be honest, I'm not 100% sure on the details of why this changes, but if I can find out, I'll post another video here to explain it. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that one when it comes. Moving on though, this is a stunning image of a nebula called Messier 78, or M78 for short. This image reminds me of fire, but in a very delicate way. In reality, it's a stellar nursery, which is actually a violent place where stars are born and burst into life. The space dust and space gas that makes up this beautiful nebula can collapse in small regions under gravity, getting hot and dense enough to start nuclear fusion and ignite a star. We're seeing it all here in the widest and deepest image ever taken of this region, marking an incredible milestone for Euclid. When taking this image, Euclid peered into the gaseous region and exposed hidden areas of star formation for the first time, and this has allowed us to map the complex filaments of gas and dust in unprecedented detail. It is part of a project that's designed to image free-floating planets with Euclid. The telescope can detect objects that are just a few times more massive than Jupiter. And in this image alone, Euclid's detectors have shown us over 300,000 brand new objects. Of course, do let me know in the comments how many of those you can spot for yourself. I suspect that not all of these will turn out to be planets, but this is an incredible achievement for the instrument and the teams involved. Small, free-floating objects like these rogue planets, or even brown dwarfs, are possible candidates to actually make up dark matter. While we currently don't think there are enough of them to entirely explain dark matter, it does remain an open question, and imaging them like this with Euclid will only help us get to a correct understanding of dark matter even faster. At the top of the frame, we also get a peek at another bright nebula called MGC 2071, and another filament of star formation towards the bottom of the image too, looking a bit like a traffic light. This lower region is a dark nebula that's forming lower mass stars, and this is really helping to make the point that wherever we point this telescope, we are getting to see amazing things. Next up, we have the Dorado group of galaxies, showcasing galaxies interacting with each other in one of the most impressive galaxy clusters visible from the Southern Hemisphere. It shows Euclid's ability to image an incredible range of objects in one frame, from very bright to very faint galaxies, small clusters of stars, tidal tails thanks to the impressive galaxy merger happening right in the center of the image, the wide and bright cores of the galaxies, and so, so much happening in the background of the image too. It's all captured by Euclid in one frame. There are countless galaxies behind the main target here, and I love going through them all and finding interesting objects here, just like the teams taking these images will be doing too, looking for even more exciting science to do. The bright Milky Way stars in the image again show off the Euclid diffraction spikes and get a halo also caused by how light passes through the telescope. And in the upper right of the image, we get an incredible example of a spiral disk galaxy being viewed perfectly edge on to create a sort of cigar looking shape that is incredibly detailed and textured, thanks to the telescope's incredible resolution. The data used to make these images will help astronomers study how galaxies evolve and collide over time, improving our models of cosmic history, and again, helping us try to get a better handle on the mysterious dark matter that influences these galaxies so much. This cluster is relatively young too, with several of the galaxies here still forming stars and showing recent signs of mergers and interacting with each other. And above all, it looks so beautiful. From a group of galaxies to a single galaxy dominating the next image, we have Euclid's brand new shot of a large spiral galaxy called NGC 6744. 
This is an incredibly good looking galaxy that is reasonably nearby in the local universe and is still forming many, many stars. Euclid's massive field of view covers the entire galaxy in one go and has the resolution to show us both the large scale spiral structure of the galaxy and the subtle structures on the small scales in the galaxy too. We can see dust lanes emerging as feather-like structures from the spiral arms. Incredible clarity in the tails of dust and gas extending out of the main spirals, caused by interactions with the nearby dwarf galaxy just here. And of course, thousands and thousands of objects in the distant background of the image too. We're using images like this to better understand exactly how the distribution of dust and gas in a galaxy lead to star formation to map how different star populations are distributed through the galaxies, and also to try and finally fully understand the physics that leads to the structure of spiral galaxies. In this image in particular, we can even count the individual stars present in the galaxy, and that is an amazing thing to be able to do, and a real testament to Euclid's resolution. The final, brand new image is of another galaxy cluster, called Abel 2764, along with an incredibly bright Milky Way star too. The cluster is in the top right of the image and shows hundreds of galaxies in an enormous halo of dark matter. As with all of the other images, there are countless background galaxies too and other nearby stars. Brighter, white and puffy objects in the background are other clusters of distant galaxies. In Abel 2764 itself, almost all of the galaxies are showing signs of interaction and disruption, suggesting there are intense changes and dynamics happening within Abel 2764. The Milky Way star in the lower part of the image is called Beta Phoenicus, or at least it's spelled like this and I did my best. It's a star in the southern hemisphere that is visible with the naked eye. And here it shows off perfectly the diffraction spikes, including the extra curved one, and the halo of light that appears around stars, something we call the point spread function, or PSF of the telescope. This telescope was designed to keep Euclid's PSF as small as possible, giving us the best chance to image faint galaxies near the star without being blinded by scattered light from that star. The engineers did an amazing job and this PSF is actually really good. Thank you so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed it and you enjoyed the images too. Now for all of the usual YouTube things. Please leave me a comment down below to let me know your favorite of these new images, or you can ask me any questions you have about the images and the things you can see in them. And please consider subscribing to the channel if you're new. Until next time, stay safe team, I'll see you soon. Bye!